the surgeons at Southpaws. Uh, today I'm doing a radical mastectomy in a samoid who presented with a history of a mass in the caudal mammary chain and it's been biopsied as a very high grade sarcoma. And so we've done a CT scan of the lungs which should not show any obvious evidence of metastasis. And we could have done just a caudal, kind of caudal three mammary gland tumors, which is, kind of, which is what's recommended, but the owner was really keen to go ahead and do the whole chain. And so that's what we're doing. So we're doing a radical mastectomy on this dog. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications and note that this live stream will go on to members only as soon as I get back to my office. Um, so go ahead and switch to the other view of the patient there if you'd like. So just click on the other HDMI one. Yep. All right, so we have the patient here in dorsal recumbency. Um, it has already had an ovarian hysterectomy performed a couple of years ago. So she was a breeding dog. And that clearly is what uh, contributed to the development of this tumor. So if you don't spay them, um, if you spay them before their first heat, you give them about 99.5% protection. If you spay them between their first and second heat, you give about 95% protection. And if you spay them after their second heat, you probably don't provide a lot of protection against mammary cancer at all. Um, so, uh, and this is an unusual one in that it is a high grade tumor. And so we have to treat these with a lot of respect. So, I don't know if you guys can see this. You can see the caudal superficial epigastric vessel running a lot, right along that mammary chain. So we're definitely going to have to take that whole thing out. And basically what we do is we're going midline. And then we'll go equidistant on the lateral aspect from the mammary chain. So again, CT scan was clear, biopsy was done by the referring vet, and that showed a high-grade mammary carcinoma. Can I have cautery turned up, please, and maybe wet the ground plate? Yeah. Thank you. So just a note about the YouTube membership. Uh, uh, so turn cut up to about seven. Uh, sorry, coag up to about seven. And then we'll re-wet that plate. Uh, so just a note about the YouTube membership, there's a lot of great content um, that we add every business day. So we've reviewed today on the, the YouTube membership a couple of CT scans, a before and after review of the radiographs on a dog that has a superglenoid tubercle fracture. Um, We've got a neuro exam on a dog that we thought had a cervical disc but turned out to have something else. So there is a lot of great content. And note that we've been running Vet Dojo, the e-learning platform and the YouTube membership for about a, um, th sorry, the uh, e-learning platform for about a, m a year and a half. And we haven't made any money on it. And so basically by charging for the YouTube membership, we're just trying to uh, support the purchase of good cameras and things like that um, and to pay for digital marketing and that kind of thing so it's not like we're making a bunch of money so it's just your opportunity as a viewer to support us 
and all the work that we've done over the past several years on providing what we think is some of the best free content and paid content on YouTube for veterinarians. So you just go to our homepage and click on join and it's about 30 bucks a month Australian. I think it's about 22 a month US. Uh, there is no evidence of gross metastasis on the chest CT scan. It's possible that this mass back here that I can see where the biopsy is, is actually a inguinal lymph node. Can I get a couple of uh, things of OPDS? So this is the actual tumor back here. And we're doing the radical mastectomy to try to prevent tumors from developing in other glands. Yeah, we've spent tens of thousands of dollars on camera equipment and switching equipment and microphones and all kinds of stuff for the YouTube channel. So we figured we'd try to at least try to recoup some of that money um, by starting this YouTube membership. Uh, so on our electric cautery machine. We are using a valley lab. It's as old as a dinosaur. Um, it's called a valley lab SSE2K. And we have the settings on it. The coag is on seven and cut is on five. Generally with the other machines we set them on about, I think it's the unit of measurement is joules or watts. Can't remember which anyway. Uh, we set those on about 30 or 40. And the dog is just getting um, the unilateral um, radical mastectomy. And so, yeah, we are taking out the whole memory chain. Can we get some epivacaine for this dog? I actually do the full dose and we'll dilute that in half with saline. So drop the full dose on a double the size syringe. And then we'll. Um, uh, no, go ahead and do the full dose, and then we'll dilute it with saline that we have on the table. Right. And we won't need any kind of flap to close this because if you think about it. Um, the caudal superficial epigastric chain is something that we use as an axial pattern flap for
for other places. And so if we use it as a donor site for an axial pattern flap, there's no reason to use a flap to close it unless you're making a huge defect, like a wide defect. That's the inguinal ring right there. Mm -hmm. You can see the inguinal pattern. So that's the inguinal ring right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Is that the caudal system to a big gastric artery? Yeah. That's the vein, but yeah, the artery and the vein come out through the same hole. Um, can we get a 12 mil syringe and we'll dilute that? So this is the mammary chain here. Got that big mammary gland tumor there with the biopsy tract that we've excised. Just tuck the inguinal fat back down the ring. And then I'll do a little closure over that. Uh, we are not doing the other side. So generally we don't recommend bilateral radical mastectomies in dogs, but we do in cats. So in dogs you just, actually usually we just take out half the chain uh, on the affected side. Um, but in cats they've shown that by doing both sides you improve the survival time. We're also recommending chemotherapy on this dog, but I don't think that the owners are going to um, accept that. And I don't like to do bilateral radical mastectomies in dogs or cats. Um, I think that the skin's under too, too much tension and it's really painful. I think that some people do it, but um, I'm not very happy to do that. So Nadia, you see how I'm just kind of splitting the distance? Yes. Um, so go ahead and do that and just bisect the distance each time. Mm -hmm and do a kind of an inverted um, cruciate. Yeah. And just pick up the kind of the cutaneous trunk eye. Do you apply yes. like the dog with uh, the kidney or meat blue in the surgery area? Sorry, do we <laughs> apply? Local drugs. Yes, so we just did mepivacaine infused into the, uh, into the wound. I think that makes a huge difference, particularly if you're in a practice that doesn't have overnight care. You can do a really, really good job or a much better job at providing pain relief. Again, particularly because even the longest lasting full agonist opiate is about you know, six hours for either morphine, methadone or buprenorphine. Um, and so if you can do that local anesthesia, it's going to last uh, even though the drug only lasts about six hours, the pain relief that you get out of it by preventing that wind-up um, is going to last for you know days or weeks. I had a, a surgery on my hand, and they did a local block, and I had an incision probably about seven centimeters long, and reattached 
two nerves and blood vessels and tendons and all kinds of stuff. And I never had to take anything more than just paracetamol um, because they did the local block. I am tacking down to the yeah. abdominal wall intermittently, but I definitely would not put a drain in this. There is no reason to drain this surgery. Can we get some more OPDS, please? Sure. Thanks, Chloe. Um, so I still try to go a couple of centimeters. Um, if I have just tiny little, you know, three millimeter nodules associated with the mammary glands, I'm just going to take the mammary gland itself and the surrounding tissue. But um, uh, anything, you know, anything larger, I'm going to go ahead and get my two or three centimeter margins. Now, what is bleeding there, Nadia? Can I get um? Can I get a Yankar suction tip, please? Go ahead and take that out. It's got a little bit of bleeding. Um, so I, the deciding factor about putting in a drain tube, I just don't use drains in this type of surgery, period. Um, I would rather close dead space and, there we go, and, um, and good, use good hemostasis. Hold on just a second. Yeah. Go ahead and double, double lay, uh, lay it there. Go farther across. Across like that? Yeah. Great, thanks. That was a caudal superficial epigastric vessel. Okay. I think you, you used the ligature on it once and then. So drains and antibiotics are two of the most overused <laughs> devices in veterinary medicine. We way overuse antibiotics and we way overuse drains. And drains do not prevent infection. Um, if anything, they increase the risk of infection. And when you get infections, you're going to get resistant strains. So um, I just really don't think that drains have a place in the majority of surgeries. And that being said, I do use electric cautery, and so my, you know, my hemostasis is really good. But I still believe that they're overused. So there's an easy way of using vacuum-assisted drains that would be helpful. 
Yeah, so Nada is just bringing up vacuum assisted closure. Vacuum assisted drains are a different story because they're very, very efficient. They actually enhance uh, granulation tissue and they're um, analgesic as well. So patients actually feel better having the vacuum assisted closure. Lovely little Samoyed, 22 kilo Samoyed. She's just a beautiful dog. And I heard last week that Samoyeds were bred to guard the children in the Arctic when the parents were out hunting. And the, the kids would just burrow in the fur. And the dogs are so gentle with, um, with kids and very good protectors. I think that's a really lovely story. And Labradors love children because they drop food. They're bred to pick up food from children. Yeah. I have a Labrador. <laughs> when you walk, of Labrador, you realize how much of the world is edible. Can I get um, some 2O Monison, please? I've got some more O-Nylon here as, if you need it, and I think you've got another pack of it as well. Yeah. So there's no reason why this dog should be on antibiotics after surgery. There's no benefit to putting this dog on prophylactic antibiotics. We give intravenous antibiotics at the time of surgery, and that is it. Post-operative antibiotics beyond 24 hours after surgery do not reduce the incidence of infection. And when you do have an infection, it, um, you're more likely to have resistant strains. So we need to get out of the habit of putting everything on antibiotics because otherwise the therapeutic goods agency is going to take away the privilege of veterinarians to use antibiotics because of uh, drug resistance and I'm sure the FDA in the US is thinking about the same thing. They were even 20 or 18 years ago when I was there. I don't know, but it is a real, a real possibility. They've discussed it in the past because of the overuse. I would imagine, Chloe, that it would be something along the lines of when you wanted antibiotics, you'd have to requisition them specifically for a particular patient. Okay. From a human pharmacy or? Who knows?
You know, and it, yeah, who knows? It might be a kind of thing where you have to take a course before you're allowed to prescribe antibiotics. Like in the U.S., you had to take a course before you could prescribe um, schedule, scheduled drugs. I think I had to do that. I, I, we had to have a, a special DEA, Drug Enforcement Agency, number. And I, I think we had to do an exam in addition to... a normal vet degree. That's a long time ago, so I can't specifically remember. Or you might have to do something like employ a pharmacist or something, or a pharmacist for a group of veterinarians that actually make sure that you're using the drugs, the antibiotics appropriately. But it is a world health problem that veterinarians play a part in the problem and the solution. for a dog that has a routine ovary hysterectomy or a castration to go home on antibiotics. Absolutely zero. It needs to have antibiotics intravenously one time at the beginning of the procedure and that is it. Especially when you've got vets doing spays in 20 minutes and a dog the risk of infection is so low. And you're not reducing the risk of infection by giving antibiotics prophylactically after the surgery. What are you laughing at? bet Nadia a case of beer on the speed of closure. <laughs> so the fastest person buys the second person a cast of beer? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Very generous of me. Are they intradermal shots or something? Intradermals. Okay. I had a very sentimental moment last night where my 22-year-old son, who's a fourth-year medical student, sat on the bed between my wife and I while we watched a movie last night. <laughs> we think it was because he was scared. <laughs> but that's a very precious moment that we cannot take for granted. Um, they cover his eyes in the inappropriate scenes. 
Yeah. yeah. It was succession, so there's no inappropriate scenes, just a lot of swearing. Yeah. See you, Chloe, thank you. All right. All right, so that's it for me. I'll just leave Nadia to close her intradermal pattern. I'll just come over and make sure that we've answered all the questions. Hello, Piyush. <laughs> Good morning, Doc. May the ligature be with you. Thank you very much. Hi from the Philippines. pretty much it. So I'll switch back over here. So again, this is a uh, eight-year-old uh, female spade Samoyed who has a history of a mammary gland tumor that was removed by the primary, or biopsied by the primary care vet, came back a high-grade carcinoma. We've done a CT scan which did not show any evidence of metastasis and so we're doing a radical unilateral mastectomy. Um, there's no benefit in dogs to doing a bilateral radical, radical mastectomy unless there is evidence of other cancer in, on the other side. Uh, so we've done a wide local excision and then we close the deep um, sub-Q and kind of, uh, kind of superficial muscle layer using OPDS in an interrupted pattern or a cruciate pattern. And then we've done an intradermal suture pattern using um, 2 O monosin uh, in a, um, uh, uh, a subcuticular pattern. Uh, Sonura, Nadia is saying, faster, Nadia, faster. <laughs> so, all right, so we'll go ahead and leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching. I do have a busy day tomorrow and the next day, and so hopefully we'll be able to live stream some more surgeries. Now, as soon as I get back to my office, we will switch this over to the members-only uh, channel. Thanks again, and we will see you soon.